With revenge, it's always personal. With justice, it's always for everyone. Those are the words bestowed upon a young Don Diego de la Vega who's questioning should he still be Zorro in the second episode of The Inheritance. And I have to tell you, if you are a superhero fan, a hero fan, comic book fan, fan of the hero's journey, this episode is for you. I'm uh, trying to contain my excitement because I was, after the first episode, curious, not totally sold, but this one, this one took off for me. This one just went into that superhero stratosphere of a hero's journey. Now it's called The Inheritance because Don Diego La Vega is um, given his, uh, his, his inheritance in a box from his father uh, who, who left it to him. Now, we don't know the exact contents. Uh, I think it was some jewelry, some imagery that I wasn't quite sure. I have to look at it again. It was so quick for me, but really the setup here is there is a bank heist, a bank robbery, so they could, so the so Zoro could show up, because what is revealed and spoiler is that the head bank robber, his father was killed by the Zoro from previous years ago. It's a great setup. The thing is, is that Don Diego is one of the hostages. Hostages. So I was like, how is Zoro going to appear? Well, I don't want to fully spoil it for you, but. This episode was really so self-contained that it almost could have been an episode one. Because what you have is, from the beginning, he's kind of cocky, he's, he's Zorro, but then this experience where he, he gets to uh, hands-on experience people dying at the hands of Zorro, the Zorro legacy, and then almost his... His, uh, his loved one, well, the one that he loves, professed loves, uh, uh, by the name of Lolita, she's wounded. He questions everything. Then his journey as far as should he don, uh, you know, the mask again. So he goes to the, uh, you know, the, uh, the Indian shaman who bestows those wise words. And then by the end of the episode, he takes it on. Not only does he take it on, but he he makes his own costume with the help of Bernardo, who is amazing in this episode, played by the great Paco Tus. Yeah, that's his name, Paco Tus. And he's fully confident. He's Zorro. He is on a mission, and he's going to do his best to uh, to uh, restore justice to where it's done, it needs to be done, but also to not just be that killer. Um, now, I, I, I'm, I'm excited because it showed that hero's journey. It showed um, the responsibility and the consciousness of a hero is that if he doesn't feel sometimes for those, for those uh, people that he has to take out, then he's not a hero. So it, it, it was great. It, it, was, it was fantastic. I also was surprised by um, the the other themes that they're hitting upon, which makes sense in 1800s California. The themes of uh, that caste system that's there. You have the indigenous, you have the mestizos, you have the uh, Spanish poor, then you have or the Mexican poor, and then you have the the uh, the noble, the the rich, and they were all touched upon. They were all talked about in this episode, and it all makes sense in that world of Don Diego, uh, Don, Don Diego de la Vega. That I was like, what, what am I watching here? This is this is so well done, so well uh, 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 as far as written, and the characters, everyone's got something going. Even Lolita's mother with the Russian lady in their banter, uh, the governor. And uh, the other aristocracy that uh, are uh, the noble, the noble uh, that are trying to rip uh, Don Diego de la Vega's uh, uh, estate from him, to where they're like, "Oh, Don Diego's there. He's a hostage. Go take my men and go shoot everybody. No, uh, take no prisoners. Like, no, don't worry about anyone dying." So everyone's got their their motives, their their thing going on, which I absolutely loved. And it really, like I says, 
just sends this whole story, this whole world, this whole uh, uh, iteration of Zoro into the stratosphere of being that superhero, being that hero. I also, too, we find out why Nalin, <clears throat> the native woman who uh, claims to be Zoro, why, why she's even making that claim and just what kind of vengeance she is full of. What a great character. And that is set and running at the same time that Zoro is running as well, becoming the new hero for the poor. I got to tell you, it, it, these guys are making a way, uh, these guys, the production people, the writers, the directors, the showrunners, uh, you know, they have found a way to keep this classic in a sense of the time that they're in, the period that they're in, and yet uh, adding new twist to it, that makes sense, that work, that's organic. This whole idea of the this, the legend, the spirit of Zorro is an, an indigenous one, and that it picks the next person. It chooses the next person. Not anyone can just don it, and the fact that they picked uh, you know, Don Diego. I, I love that idea because it goes because some some of the indigenous don't like it. Uh, so cool, and everyone you know. The, of course, the, the noble people, the, the rich hate Zorro, and then there's some very personal um, uh, connections of uh, of uh, of murder and uh, and trauma that the Zorro before created that uh, kind of play into this one. There is a fantastic scene with the uh, the Zoro before with a, a, a young little Nalin, and I don't want to tell it all, but it, it, it it's about it's about knowing who you are, having that courage to to take the next step, and soon one day you'll be the next Zoro. And you know, with Nalin, she just wants it now, but she her she's she's definitely on a whole. Uh, path of vengeance um okay so that being said we're gonna rate this in a second but uh, i want you to check out our other reviews we have a review of each uh of episode one and i'm gonna be reviewing each episode two that being said about this i said before it to begin with that if you're a fan of uh, a hero lore of superhero legend uh, Batman, Zorro, all those. This episode is for you. This episode takes off. And I'm kind of surprised that it took off so quickly. I was like, okay, well, episode one was all right. But, you know, maybe it'll work its way up. So my only apprehension is like, you know, how can it get any better? Because I feel that this was really a self-contained, wonderful episode. Uh, so this is for you guys. This is for you guys. This is everything that... Hollywood, that uh, American uh, 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 takes on on hero superheroes and heroes that they have uh, really have ruined the last several years. This is how you do it, and it's wonderful that a Latin American team out of Spain and Mexico, international cast from Latin America, are just knocking it out of the park. And listen, yeah, some of the production isn't like the like the greatest, but. It, it just doesn't matter, you know, the, it almost lends to the time. It is good enough, and in, in some cases, it's really good. So, I'm all in. I loved episode two the, called The Inheritance. I think each character, uh, primary, you know, especially the, our lead, is really taking off on the role. Uh, episode one, I gave a seven out of ten. Here, we're going to go a little higher. We're going to go 8.5 out of ten. This is is one of the best hero superhero tales I have seen in years. And that includes Marvel, that includes DC. This is the OG, the man, Soto. And he's come to say, um, Marvel, DC, hold my whip. Let me show you how it's done. Now, if you wanna see more uh, uh, reviews of, uh, of Soto, and uh, I have a great, actually, I have a great video for you guys. I do the I do uh, the five parallels of Zorro and Batman. I want you all to check that out right here. That video right there is a fantastic one I did uh, comparing and contrasting Zorro to Batman. I hope you enjoy it. Stick around and remember wherever you're at, keep that slam fuerte. Bye.